92. I just told the world that you're 92, Sylvia. Yeah. Um, now the reason why we're doing, uh, we're, we're videotaping Sylvia is a lot of people believe that um, people this old can't be adjusted. And what we want to show you is that they can be. And they can be adjusted very safely and they can get a lot of benefit. Um, Sylvia's just had a pacemaker put in and she was advised by a fill-in GP because she couldn't see a normal one. Um, by two GPs actually that she shouldn't have a chiropractor touch her because she's got extensive degeneration in her neck. Um, but her regular GP said that because she's had help from us before that she was more than happy for her to come in and, and get some more help. So that just shows that you know a lot of the general practitioners out there um, are using logic these days to realize that professional people that know what they're doing can take care of these people properly. But the main reason that the medical people and consequently the public are worried about adjusting old people, particularly when they've got a lot of degeneration, is that degeneration, the arthritis. They believe that that makes it too dangerous to adjust the spine. So we've brought you across to Sylvia's x-rays and we're going to show you what her x-rays actually look like, what her neck looks like underneath her skin. Okay, so these are Sylvia's x-rays. We'll try and show you, or give you a better idea about where the degeneration is. These are the facet joints. You can see how they've splayed out. They've changed their, their anatomy quite a lot. So here, they've almost disappeared. Here you've got this change in normal shape and appearance completely. You've got this osteophytic growth that's running up the side here. And you've got these irregular cortical borders and, and very shallow joint spaces up both sides of the neck. It was actually C6 that we adjusted on Sylvia. Yeah, this, is, this is the vertebra that's out of position, or at least not functioning properly and irritating the nerve. You can see that C5-6 disc is almost almost gone. C6 disc is hard to show you. You might not pick it up on the camera. There's a little bit of our anterior wedge in there, but the main thing is we can see that C6 is posterior. The actual body of C5 is posterior in relation to C4. This is something the medical people wanted to fuse a little while ago. Thankfully they didn't. Um, you can see C6, the line of correction is almost straight superior to inferior. That's one of the biggest things you need to look at when you're adjusting somebody like this. That's our line of correction. Now to achieve this line of correction, we need to put the back support of the chair on its last notch to account for her posterior curve and bring her head into more of a neutral position so that we can get it sitting above her spine as well as possible. At this point, we just take a contact the same as we would for any person. The focus of the correction is P to A with a little bit of I to S because we need to pick up the spinous and set the vertebra onto the disc. This is a pacemaker here that she recently had put in, very recently, in fact only a few weeks ago. It was She was having a lot of fainting episodes, she couldn't walk very far without fainting and the medical people weren't sure whether it was something to do with the vertebral basilar insufficiency or blood supply to the brain or if it was cardiac, it turned out to be mostly cardiac, but after the surgery she had a lot of dizziness, a lot of ringing in the ears, a lot of pain in her head, and a decrease in range of motion. She couldn't turn her head much at all, as you will see in the video, uh, without pain. Is there Sylvia? Yes. That's the one. Alright, now the reason why we can get away with adjusting Sylvia without any trouble is we don't use any rotation in these adjustments. We don't get behind them, we don't lay them down, get behind them and twist their head. Um, we have the patient sitting up like this where the, the patient's head sits above their own neck and they support it themselves. And all I'm going to do is just put this vertebra into a neutral position, the same as I would for anybody. And then we're going to protect all the other stuff. We're going to protect all the, the vertebra that, that are a bit degenerated and um, a bit arthritic, but they're actually working. So we need to keep them that way. This position's a bit low for me because it's my associate's chair, so I've got to hunch over a little bit to get into the right position. The C7 disc at the moment, even though we've got her in the best position possible, it's if we draw a line through it, it's a little bit superior to inferior still. But I've still got to pick up the spinous to set it onto the disc. So once we get her into the position, I'll bring her chin back a little bit more than I normally would, just to open up that anterior joint space, and we'll set it through the correct line of drive. So we'll need I to S to pick the spinous and the, the vertebral body up onto the disc 
and the P2A to set it straight through the plane line of the disc. And as you can see there's no rotation at all in there and with this hand at the back I'm just going to give this a little push. When we're ready Sylvia I've just got to find the right spot Pretty good. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, you're still smiling and you're not dead, so that's good. <laughs> you have magic hands. Thanks. You're very kind. That's much better, isn't My it? My goodness, yes. There we go. Oh, thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Alright. Okay, so that's a good result. Um, Thank you so much. My pleasure, Sylvia.